Hi folks, and welcome back to Travels with Paddles. My name's James, and today we are at Saint Enemy to paddle on the Tarn. And there's Anna, <laughs> very excited. Okay. Here's a map of the route, and total distance was 14.2 miles. So, welcome to our first day of adventures on the Tarn. We're launching from the very picturesque village of Saint Enemy and as you can see, access to the water is very easy from the car park in the centre of town. This is the first video of a four part series covering our paddles on the Tarn, so please do check out the other three videos as well. This is another trip that has been a long time in the making. We're paddling here in 2023, but the original idea was proposed by Martin after we paddled the Ardèche in 2018. The Tarn is a river in southern France with a length of 236 miles. Its source is on Mount Lozère in the Cévennes Mountains, and the river ends where it joins the Garonne near Moissac. The river is best known for its deep scenic gorges, but also because it flows under the huge viaduct at Millau. We'll be seeing more of that viaduct in later videos. In terms of paddling, this section from saint enemy to the Pas de Souci is a very relaxed, easy paddle. There are lots of sections of slow moving crystal clear water regularly interspersed with rapids of class 1, possibly scratching at class 2, which are perfect for keeping up your interest. The main attraction, however, is undoubtedly the glorious scenery. What you're watching now is pretty typical of the rapids that you're going to get along this section. And of course, even the smallest wave is a perfect opportunity for a nice little surf session. On this holiday, we have Travels with Paddles regulars, Penn and Ken, Jane and Tony, Sarah and Martin, Hannah and myself, but we also managed to persuade our buddy Dan to come along as well. After about three miles of paddling, we reached our first brake stop at saint chely du tarn As well as consuming some food and drink, it was a perfect opportunity to break out the drone. back on the water and we headed under the bridge and past the village. Paddling through this waterfall seemed like a good idea at the time. Unfortunately, the water wasn't quite as fresh as I was hoping and it did smell quite badly of drains. Still, it looks lovely though.
We paddled the tarn in late May and the water levels were pretty much perfect. Just be aware that the south of France has suffered several years of drought and if you decide to paddle in the height of summer, July, August or September, there may not be much water in the river at all. In a few places, the river has carved its way through the rock to form some small caves. About two miles after saint Chely, you come across the Château de la Case, a very grand property. It is now a hotel and restaurant. This is one of the trickier rapids that you need to be aware of as the water naturally wants to take you down the right hand side under the trees. To avoid this you need to keep well left and take it easy. Just below the rapid is another nice little surf wave. Now, hopefully you can see those cables that we're passing under. Well, it turns out they're actually quite an interesting feature of this little village. The village is called Autrive and is situated river left. However, the road is river right, which means there's no direct access to the village at all. People have to cross the river by boat, but food is transported in a basket via the cable system that runs over the river. We're now just upriver of La Malène, where there is a large ramp weir, which is runnable. Well, certainly in the water levels that we had. It's always worth scouting a weir before you shoot it, to check for dangerous stoppers at the bottom. I'm now unashamedly going to show the clip for each person who ran the weir, because let's face it, everybody loves to see themselves do this kind of stuff. Nicely done folks, virtually no water in the boat. Once you pass the battalion of canoe rental buses, you know that you've reached La Malène. This is where we stopped for lunch. For reference, there's also a public toilet here, which is kind of handy, up in the corner next to the bridge. This final section of today's paddle leads into some of the grandest scenery along the Tarn. We're now entering the Détroit du Tarn. We even received some interest from a local raptor. Now then, this video would be dangerously incomplete if I didn't discuss in some detail what we are rapidly approaching at the end of the paddle. This is a feature known as the pas de souci, which unfortunately translates to no worries. This couldn't really be further from the truth, as it is a rock fall of giant boulders that completely blocks passage through the bottom end of the gorge. Do not try to paddle through this feature. The boulders create tight gaps and siphons which will suck you in and hold you in place underwater. Several kayakers have attempted to paddle this feature in the past 
and have ended up dead. As the paddle approaches its conclusion, you need to keep your eyes open for the canoe rental stop point. In our case, we chose the very last before the Pas de Souci itself, mainly because there's a nice lay-by on the road above the river where you can park your cars. This stop sign looks pretty ominous, but you can in fact go a little bit further to get easier access to the road. Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do check out days two, three, and four, and until next time, stay safe on the water.